Let's wait, Susan. Do your sexiest voice. Okay, I'm going to give you a line. Okay, it's going to be a little bit obscure. You have to say this. I want to dive off that cliff and swim to shore. In your sexiest voice. I want to dive off that cliff and swim to the shore. Mm, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I'm talking Nicely about. Nicely done. Oh. Okay. Um, <laughs> Thank you. We don't get to do this at work. Who, who's so. our new friend here? I'm so excited, by All right, the way. So uh, uh, tonight, dear guests, or dear listeners, we and dear guests, we have Susan McMartin, who is a our brilliant writer on mom mm. and she's a dear friend of mine and i'm so happy that she's here we kind of want to do a little bit of like a hollywood insight sure we're having, like we're having obnoxious? a i don't know if that sounds I, I just think that there are so many people out there that really don't know how to break into mm -hmm. hollywood whether it's as a writer or an actor or a director and and I really do feel like you're going to give us some valuable insight because oh, we have so many so. listeners who, who want to be involved in also, the creative arts. I yeah. also want to grill you on your uh, love life. Okay. And I also <laughs> want to introduce uh, Cassie, who's our segment producer. She just sold a script. Yay. 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 It's so fun sitting on this side of the table. I know, I know. There's like a new pressure being over here. Um, she sounds sexy too, without <laughs> even you. doing anything. <laughs> I like that there's three women. I know. That's kind of cool. Yes, and only one man with a mic, which is... That's true. The odds are, you know, not favorable for us, but we'll see what we can do. Hey, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> nice eyebrow wiggle. <laughs> These right. mics are really good, by the way. They're very... Amazon. <laughs> really? Is that where you got all your equipment? Oh, my God. I love it. Um, but Sorry. Cassie, we please oh, tell us your story. Um, about, about my script, the yeah. process of the script. Yeah. So I, uh, I'd been out here probably 10 years writing for the last seven and this, uh, and this was the first script I ever sold. It's called Besties. It's about, uh, four women who go on a road trip together to break up a wedding. It sold to uh, DreamWorks and uh, Montecito. Amazing. Hell yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. It's for wow. a nice chunk of change. Yeah. Cassie, <laughs> I'm so happy for you. Thanks, guys. We really are so happy for you. I and started you here. You deserve it. <laughs> this room. You're and you're still here. I'm, st I'm not going anywhere. Good. You're going to have to kick me out Is that door Is it based window. on a real experience? You know what's so funny? I wish it was like when we go, um, I wrote it with my writing partner and, uh, Mark and I, we go on these meetings together and everyone says, they're like, so tell us about the script. Where did you get the idea? And I have a really boring story of just like, well, I just wanted to write this movie about four girls who reconnect and go on a trip together. And then after a while we looked at each other and we're like, you know, what? we got to come up with a really great story. So then I started going in and I was like, well, Mark and I know each other because, well, I tried to break up his wedding <laughs> and they're like, what? Cassie, I and I can't thank you enough for being you've been like such a huge huge part of this whole yes. podcast Thanks, adventure. Guys. That's so true. We, we love you. I love yeah. me. I, love, I you. love doing it. Um You feed me in the attic all the time. <laughs> it's true. You hardly ever beat me. <laughs> At well, least she gives you like good you food. Kinda, you know, Which, that's when I deserve it. I that's when I deserve it. Well, that's when, when I step out like, of line. Oh, could I get kidney beans? I know. I know. <laughs> Can you give me water? It's been three days. You know, that's when I... Um... Well, but you know, the dehydration makes you look a lot better. It's good for the skin. Yeah. yeah. And the sunken cheeks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's very Thank Hollywood. You. you guys are good to me. <laughs> um, Susan? Yeah. Okay. So, wait. First of all, mm -hmm. can we talk about your name? Did your mom or dad ever call you Susie? They called me Sue. Sue. And my friends growing up called me Subi. Subi. Yeah. I love that. I'd be like, Subi. Nowadays, do you have like friends that call you Subi that you, that you realize like these are the people that I'm closest to? Yeah, I'm still, the people in my life are the same people that have been in my life for my entire life. I mean, I grew up in LA and so all my closest friends are the same kids I grew up with. Um, and they still call me Sue B. My sister calls me Sue and my, um, some of my friends call me Sue's S O O Z E Sue's. Hey, All right, Sue's. Sue's. I've got a question for you. Yes. What advice would you give to a young writer, writer or actor or anybody who is starting out in the mm -hmm. industry? Wow. I mean, first, and foremost, 
you know, really want this, want to do this, want to be, you know, in this humiliated, <laughs> really made rejected. The um, and I think, you know, for me, um, finding your voice, having a really unique voice and, writing your truth, write what you know to start with, especially because only you can really tell your stories the way Mm -hmm. you see stories, you know? And I think that's instead of trying to copy something that you've seen, like I'm instead of, you know, for example, mom, don't try to mimic a mom episode, you know, write, you know, in the old, in the olden days, everybody had to write specs based on shows that were already, now people really want to see original material because they want to see, anybody can kind of emulate another show or a movie type, but show me your voice, your style, your, and I think that's more important because down the road you can, if you need to do a sample of a show that your writing chops will be strong. But if somebody says, you know, what's your voice, you'll have honed it you know i know it's different to write for tv and to write for film especially Mm -hmm. when you're first starting out and trying to get noticed um i have friends who are trying to break into tv but they said at times it's easier to break into film because you can write a spec and then get it to the right person and all of a sudden there could be a bidding war like what happened with cassie right with tv it's a completely different process where you have to start out maybe as a writer's assistant and kind of work your way up and get into rooms and if you wanted to write your own show you would have to have a track record behind you otherwise you wouldn't get the proper showrunner am i completely wrong on this you know it's changed so much i mean when i started writing for television was so different. I mean, now it is writer's assistants work their way up. I mean, right. on all of Chuck Lorre's shows that I've been involved in, almost every writer's assistant has eventually become a staff writer. And for me, when I started out, I mean, not at all. I, I had to just write original material or spec scripts. Or, so then how did you get involved with Chuck? And- with Chuck, it was so interesting because I had a fairly decent career. I was making a living as a writer, single mom, you know, uh, sole provider for my baby and, you know, living paycheck to paycheck. And I had somehow, you know, I went to NYU, graduated the writing program. Somehow I I managed to to make a living and then everything came to a screeching halt. Like I could not get a job. And it was, I mean, I was, what do you think that was? It was, was the screeching halt? You know, if I, when I look back on it, I think it had to happen for for me to grow and change and do th- experience something that I. But do you think that it was it was, was like, the like industry? Climate? Yeah. Well, I think the- a lot of it was also yeah. I mean, it was uh, reality TV was really becoming so big that scripted shows weren't there weren't as many slots mm-hmm. available. So that was one thing. I think. Um, uh, the, you know, the writer, the, the writer strike, strike, you know, so there was a lot that went into it. And, and, um, and, you know, I, during that period of time, I, um, I started writing a weekly column, which is why I've always said to you, I love this podcast because I love people who have outside projects keep going at all times because it keeps you, I don't know, creative and, and feeling somewhat in control of your destiny, you yes. know? And we talked yeah. about this privately too. Like, yeah. um, it's, I, I love mom so much, but the doing the podcast has also been a way for me to express sort of my idiotic self in a format where I kind of think that no one's going to listen to, but turns out some people do. We have to talk about your movie also. We oh only, my God. We only have a little bit of time. Everybody go see Mr. Church. Eddie Murphy's amazing. Britt Robertson, who you guys had yes, here. Yes, and we love her so yes. much. You're so brilliant. You oh, have been, so I, I love it that um, in our environment of mom, I, I feel like I always get to look to the brilliant crew of writers in times of vulnerability. And you guys always feel like you kind of have our well, backs. You're and- amazing. I I am so lucky to get to write for you. And you're just, you set such a great tone on that stage everybody feels happy and and loved and you're you're just this joy and um and you're honestly like this podcast is so awesome i mean i'm so happy you're doing this when you told me about it when it was like a year know, and a half and ago or something so kind and i been, said like, you have to do it yes just jump in because it's great and people love it Aww. love it love it love it so i'm so psyched well, I'm so glad you're here. And um, I want to ask you later on maybe about like how you guys sort of figure out how you tailor writing to uh, characters okay. and people. But maybe that's kind of boring, but very interesting to me. Yeah. <laughs> um, but the writer's room. 
Yeah. How do you guys like pitch stories, pitch jokes? What happens if you pitch a joke that you feel like is really strong but gets like shot down? <laughs> that happens like yeah, Do you get day. your feelings hurt or do you just get to a place where you just don't <sighs> emotionalize? It? Well, you know, when I first started writing um, for Chuck on Two and a Half Men, I was so intimidated by him. And, and, um, why? <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and, you know, and I would take it personally, you know, if, and then I realized it's never personal. And, you know, you develop a thick skin for sure. In a writer's room, you develop a thick skin, especially because on Two and a Half Men, I was like, one, there was like me and one other woman, and that was it. And the rest were all guys. So that in itself. Um, but you also have to not fall. You have to, for me, I always have to remember this is somebody else's vision, and I'm here to to help that person see that vision through. So it's not my baby, it's their baby. And I've been invited to kind of like help nurture it. You know, when it's my own thing, it's, you know, it, that's a whole different thing. Did you feel like uh, the pressure to be raunchier because you're a woman? Um, cause I, I, I'm not pressure cause I like to be really raunchy, but, but with two and a half men in, in you know, a pretty yeah. raunchy environment, did you feel like as a woman, like, okay, I, I want to like, I think that one of the reasons why I did well on that show was because I'm able to be raunchy and I'm not easily offended and I can play with the boys. And, but sometimes it's hard because sometimes you feel like, am I, am I betraying my sex? You know, like, am I using my sexuality? Am I using my raunchiness to stay there? And maybe that little voice in me that goes, mm, this isn't appropriate or I'm feeling a little bit offended or whatever isn't speaking up because you want to stay in the room, you know? And, um, I mean, when I was, younger for sure i flirted more in my way of when i'd go in on a pitch i was more you know yeah. you'd lead with some of that so. yeah you know as now that i'm an old middle-aged <laughs> washed up woman now uh, uh now that disagree, i disagree you're fucking smoking you're so sweet but no i mean now i'm like i don't tend to lead with that anymore but um which feels so good that i don't feel like i have to i mean i love obviously i love talking about sex i love talking about men i love talking about women like I am very open. I've told you that from the beginning. I'm like, I'm, you don't have to worry about me on your podcast. I won't be like, whoa, what are we doing? You know? No, I, know. I mean, I'm, I'm very open that way, but I never want to feel like I, that is something I like, I have to do to get the job. That's, mm. that's the difference. You know, I think, um, being able to have a sense of humor about all this stuff and like not because some people can't, you know, some people really can't talk about this kind of stuff. And I get that. I appreciate that. You know, do you feel more heard by like, you know, the people that we work with as you work with them more and more? Um, yeah. You know, I mean, I feel like I've developed trust, you know, you hit after a certain amount of time you've been, I mean, I've been now working in the Chuck Lorre world for, I guess it's almost six years. It's taken time, you know, to earn that trust. It's taken time. It's also, I've had to learn when I, I, I know better when to pitch, when not to pitch, when to bring in a story, when not to bring a story. Like you, you feel the temperature of the room and you start to have a better understanding. And I think it's why the people who work with Chuck tend to be the people that have been in his life for a really long time. I mean, look at Eddie, you know, these people. And I think it's because once he knows you get him and you get his rhythm and you, it's like, it's like a dance, you know, it's like a, being in a band. It really is. And you kind of have to know when do I come in with the trumpet, you know, and when do I like just let the, the band leader like leave. Yeah. So, um, but that took time. It took time. And, you know, in the beginning I was so, oh, so, so insecure. It's terrifying. I'm sure. Yeah. How I would you, go into my office and be like, Oh my God, he hates me. I'm going to get fired. You know, and then I'd come out and be like, hi. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, I think, you know, but I'm sorry. What were you asking me? Well, I have two questions. Yeah. Right? If I may yeah. pick your brain. One, did you ever in the beginning when you felt intimidated, did you ever find yourself holding back when you did have a great idea or you felt was a great idea? Cause you felt like, Oh, what if people don't like it? What if? You know, what if it's shot down or did that ever affect your confidence at all in what you were mm, creating? That's a good question. I think that there have been times that I've sat on an idea because I could tell it wasn't the right time to pitch it. Like, you know, it might not be well received in this moment right. because we're working on another direction or a mood, the energy of the room isn't right or whatever. Um, but I've, ne if I really feel like excited about an idea, I've always, 
I've always expressed it. And I think that, I think the, one of the things if, you know, that Chuck appreciates about me is that I do keep coming back. Like, even if I'm batted down, I don't you let that stop me from coming back. Like the people in the room even say, Susan, you're like, you're like, um, you know, Rocky, you just keep coming back because like, you know, because you have to, because I think he, and he think he needs to know I can bat you down and you're not going to be scared right. at, because you're right. You know, like he hired you because he needs to know you're going to just keep coming up with ideas. And, and he trusts you yeah. that you're going to, but there are days, you know, there are times that I've had days where I'm like, Oh, nothing I'm saying is hitting, you know, I'm just going to be quiet for a while because my, vo my voice and my ideas are not, penetrating. And then there are days where everything that comes out of my mouth is like gold. And you're like, what, what happened? Okay. What am I wearing? What did I eat today? Yeah. <laughs> What's, What's the, the weather magic? out? Yeah. You kind of, I always say to Derek, like whenever I come home, if I've had a good day, I'm scared to say it because I'm always think oh, I'm going to jinx it. Like tomorrow's going to be horrible, you know, but, um, I've learned so much working on both two and a half men and mom. I love mom so much. The writer's room is on mom is so supportive. Two and a half men was tougher. It was a little bit more competitive. It was a little bit more like, because it was more of a boys club. I felt like every day I felt like I had to suit up with armor and be like, okay, what, what hell awaits me? <laughs> you know, like Not, not in a bad way, but just that knowing that there was a lot more teasing and there was a lot more, um, frat, house feel yeah you know? Sin um, knows that yeah 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 and the, yeah um, mom is very like i think because there's more women too it's got a different balance i'm really glad and you guys do such an unbelievable job writing for us i i allison and i are constantly just we're just so grateful that you guys continue to challenge us and you um and you just write like these incredible characters for us and and so uh, we feel incredibly grateful so oh my god we're lucky you and allison make our even things that we write that we're like oh i don't know if that's gonna work you'll make it work and that's i mean we're always amazed by what you guys do and we're like oh my god it worked they they made it work you know so I'm kind I don't know if that's true. <laughs> it is true. I could actually cite some examples where that's not true. <laughs> Before we go, because um, we do have to leave yeah. soon, we have uh, something happening in about 10 minutes. Woo! Um, Ooh, but, yeah. Uh, yes, we do. But before we go, can you talk about your movie real yeah. quick? Um, it's called Mr. Church, and I, it it's based on a real friendship from my life. I, it took me over 12 years to get it made, so talk about, yeah. I, it, for five years, Sam Jackson was attached to it, and then it didn't happen, and it sat on a shelf for three years, and then it came off the shelf, and then we got it, and then it all started to finally happen. But um, So it's in theaters, and um, it's ba basically, it's a totally different side of me. It's a drama. Okay. It's... Um, it's about, I grew up with this man in my life who helped raise me, who is the reason I became a writer. And, um, he came into my life when my mom was really dying of cancer and, and, uh, and I was a very lost kid and he, he was like the greatest man ever. And when he passed away, he passed away before my daughter was born. And I was always really sad that she would never know him. And so, um, I thought, well, maybe I can have them meet in a movie. I mean, that's the joy of being a writer. You can like, yeah make things happen, you know, and you can fudge life, you know, and, and make it kind of come out the way you hoped it would. And, um, and so I started writing the script and the script actually wrote really quick. I didn't outline it or anything. I wrote it really oh, fast. Wow. And then it was really one of those divine experiences where it just poured out of me. And I was, you know, uh, I was, I would write when my Hannah was a baby. So I'd write when she was napping. I'd write when she was, you know, watching TV. And, um, so it's now finally happened. It's finally out. And Eddie Murphy's amazing. It's his, it's, he's incredible in it. So and he, great. And wow. it's, it's, I'm real, and I'm so proud of it. I'm just so proud that it exists now. Like if nothing else, like it exists and people who go see it are getting a little piece of this relationship that was so important to me. So I think we all know how it feels when you work really hard oh. for something that finally comes through after years and years of trying. It's so gratifying. Congratulations. It, thank you. Susan. Yes. Could we work on a project together? Yes. Could, um, okay. I've always, I really want to be like, play a 13 year old oh. in a 40 year old body. Oh, really? Yeah. Like Freaky Friday? Well, but sort of a more dramatic take. Okay. 
<laughs> what do you think? I think you could nail it. And I give you these spacey eyes. I love the spacey <laughs> eyes. Oh my God. <laughs> Let's do it. Yeah. Yes. And, but what, what happens is like a really hot man Ooh. meets you, uh-huh. but he thinks you're like a grown up, but you're oh. really this like 13 year old. Like it's really kind of weird. <laughs> yeah. I like it. So he's like, <laughs> he had no idea that he was like pedophilic. Yeah. Like he, he's like this up, he's finally fallen in love and then he casts. Do you want to be the dude? Should we do a little role okay, play? Let's do it. <clears throat> okay. What's your name? Henry. Henry, but Henry Sampson. Henry Sampson. Are you, and you're okay. my biology teacher or oh. you, I brought it. No, wait, are it. you 40, but a 13 year old inside you? Is that what it is? Yes. You're mm, no, you know what? Let's just say I'm 13. Okay. Oh, and you're just a pedophile. Oh, so now I'm just like sting in that yeah. weird music video where he's like hitting on the students. I'm sorry. Okay. What was that music video? That wasn't the cartoon one. I don't remember that one. God, it was when he was with the police. Um, it wasn't like a. Uh, okay. Gosh, what, okay. Well, now this is like a um, real drama. Okay. Hey, Mr. Sampson, mm-hmm. I had a couple questions about my homework. Okay. Um, do you remember when C um, squared equals is supposed to like... I'm going like, to have to stop you for a minute. Yeah. I don't know how to tell you this, but when you stand this close to me and look at me with those big blue 13-year-old <laughs> eyes, <laughs> I'm feeling... <laughs> excited and very <laughs> uncomfortable and you have to understand i am much much <laughs> much older than you mr samson though come on don't you think we're sort of on the same level you know if the sexuality we were, wise well if we were in france this would work but in the states <laughs> maybe, i could go to jail for maybe this I should, i'm not gonna go to jail mr samson because i'm not gonna tell anybody Please Come call on, me just Henry. <laughs> just grab my ass. Just oh give it a quick. Oh squeeze. my god! Oh my god! I'm gonna get fired. No, I'm picturing myself as like Matthew Broderick right now. Like I'm like Matthew Broderick would play this role, and he'd be you like, cause, "And you, he, you know why it's Matthew Broderick? Election? Yes. Yeah, and you can't it's hate him totally. Like right. you feel for him because he's in this like kind of and control. she's awful. Yeah. Yeah. She's, but come yeah. on, aren't you a little bit seduced? Totally. Susan, come on. Oh, totally. You are? <laughs> I am. Thank and you. But at the same time, it's like, this is what he would say. He'd go, I look at you and I, I'm sorry, but I think of my daughter. She's only a year younger than you. And yet you don't seem like a child. I want to tell you something. I never had a daddy before. Oh God, help me. <laughs> <laughs> this is wrong. This is wrong. All right, let's oh, wrap it up. Yeah, yeah, I saw yeah. Sam do the old. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, dear listeners, I love you. We'll be back with more. Or we just end the show. Right. What you're saying okay. is that we'll be back. We'll, they'll be back with more. We're ending the show. They're not going to be back. There's no more. That's it. We're ending the show right now. Okay. Hey, everyone. I guess the show is dead. <laughs> Good night and goodbye forever, Good night, according everyone. to Sim. Good night. Bye. Never Thank tune you. in to us again. Writer, writer, or actor, or anybody who is starting out in the mm-hmm. industry. Wow. I mean, first and foremost, you know, really want this, want to do this, want to be, you know, in this. (laughs) Humiliated. Really make the decision. Um, And I think, you know, for me, um, finding your voice, having a really unique voice and writing your truth, write what you know to start with, especially because only you can really tell your stories the way mm-hmm. you see stories, you know? And I think that's instead of trying to copy something that you've seen, like I'm instead of, you know, if, for example, mom, don't try to mimic a mom episode, you know, write, you know, in the old, in the olden days, everybody had to write specs based on right. shows that were already, now people really want to see original material because they want to see, anybody can kind of emulate another show or a movie type, but 
show me your voice, your style. Your, and I think that's more important because down the road you can, if you need to do a sample of a show, then your writing chops will be strong. But if somebody says, you know, what's your voice, you'll have honed it, you know. I know it's different to write for TV and to write for film, especially mm-hmm. when you're first starting out and trying to get noticed. Um, I have friends who are trying to break into TV, but they said at times it's easier to break into film because you can write a spec and then get it to the right person and all of a sudden there could be a bidding war like what happened with Cassie. Right. But with TV, it's a completely different process where you have to start out maybe as a writer's assistant and kind of work your way up well, and get yeah. into rooms. And if you wanted to write your own show, you would have to have a track record behind you. Otherwise, you wouldn't get the proper showrunner. Am I completely wrong on no, this? No, you know, it's changed so much. I mean, when I started writing for television was so different. I mean, now it is writer's assistants work their way up. I mean, right. on the, all of Chuck Lorre's shows that I've been involved in, almost every writer's assistant has eventually become a staff writer. And for me, when I started out, I mean, not at all. I, I had to just write original material or spec scripts. Or, so then how did you get involved with Chuck? And- with Chuck, it was so interesting because I had a fairly decent career. I was making a living as a writer, single mom, you know, uh, sole provider for my baby and, you know, living paycheck to paycheck. And I had somehow, you know, I went to NYU, graduated the writing program. Somehow I I managed to, to make a living and then everything came to a screeching halt. Like I could not get a job. And it was, I mean, I was, what do you think that was? It was, what was the screeching halt? You know, if I, when I look back on it, I think it had to happen for for me to grow and change and do th- experience something that I. But knew. do you think that it was it was, like, was the like industry? Climate? Yeah. Well, I think the- a lot of it was also yeah. I mean, it was uh, reality TV was really becoming so big that scripted shows weren't there weren't as many slots mm-hmm. available. So that was one thing. I think. Um, uh, the, you know, the writer, the strike, strike, you know, so there was a lot that went into it. And, and, um, and, you know, I, during that period of time, I, um, I started writing a weekly column, which is why I've always said to you, I love this podcast because I love people who have outside projects keep going at all times because it keeps you, I don't know, creative and, and feeling somewhat in control. The script. Yay. Yay. It does. It's so fun sitting on this side of the table. I know, I know. There's like a new pressure being over here. Um, she sounds sexy too, without even you. doing anything. Yeah. I like that there's three women. I know. That's kind of cool. Yes, and only one man with a mic, which is that's true. The odds are, you know, not favorable for us, but we'll see what we can do. Hey, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> nice eyebrow wiggle. <laughs> These right. mics are really good, by the way. They're very... Amazon. <laughs> really? Is that where you got all your equipment? Oh, my God. I love it. Um, but Sorry. Cassie, we please oh, no. tell us your story. Um, about, about my script? The yeah. process of the script? Yeah. So I, uh, I'd been out here probably 10 years writing for the last seven. And this, uh, and this was the f- first script I ever sold. It's called Besties. It's about uh, four women who go on a road trip together to break up a wedding. It sold to uh, DreamWorks and uh, Montecito. Amazing. Hell yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. It's for a nice chunk of change. Yeah. Cassie, (laughs) I'm so happy for you. Thanks, guys. We really are so happy for you. I started here. You deserve it. (laughs) It's true. You're and you're still here. I'm, st- I'm not going anywhere. Good. You're going to have to kick me out Is that door. Is it based window. on a real experience? You know what's so funny? I wish it was. Like when we go, um, I wrote it with my writing partner. And uh, Mark and I, we go on these meetings together. And everyone says, they're like, so tell us about the script. Where did you get the idea? And I have a really boring story of just like, well, I just wanted to write this movie about four girls who reconnect and go on a trip together. And then after a while, we looked at each other and we're like, you know, we got to come up with a really great story. So then I started going in and I was like, well, Mark and I know each other. Wait, Susan, do your sexiest voice. Okay, I'm going to give you a line. Okay, it's going to be a little bit obscure. You have to say this. I want to dive off that cliff and swim to shore. In your sexiest voice. I want to dive off that cliff 
And swim to the shore. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm talking Nicely about. Nicely done. Oh. Okay. Um, <laughs> Thank you. We don't get to do this at work. Who, so. Who's our new friend here? I'm so excited, by All right, the way. So uh, uh, tonight, dear guests, or dear listeners, we and dear guests, we have Susan McMartin, who is a our brilliant writer on mom mm. and she's a dear friend of mine and i'm so happy that she's here we kind of want to do a little bit of like a hollywood insight sure that we're, having, like we're having we're having just i don't know if that sounds I, I just think that there are so many people out there that really don't know how to break into mm -hmm. hollywood whether it's as a writer or an actor or a director and and i really do feel like you're going to give us some valuable insight because oh, we have so many so. listeners who who want to be involved in also, the creative arts I also want to grill you on your uh, love life. Okay. <laughs> and I also want to introduce uh, Cassie, who's our segment producer. She just sold it. Because, well, I tried to break up his wedding. <laughs> and they're like, what? Cassie, I, and I can't thank you enough for being, you've been like such a huge, huge part of this whole yes. podcast Thanks, adventure. Guys. That's so true. We love you. I love yeah. me. I love you. I love doing it. Aww. Um, you feed me in the attic all the time. That's true. You hardly ever beat me. <laughs> At well, least she gives you like good you food. Kinda, you know, but you, that's when I deserve it. I, that's when I deserve it. You know, well, that's when, when I step out like, of line. Oh, could I get kidney beans? I know. I know. <laughs> Can you give me water? It's been three days. You know, that's when I. Um, well, but you know, the dehydration makes you look a lot better. It's good for the skin. Yeah. yeah. And the sunken cheeks. Yeah. It's very <laughs> Thank Hollywood. You. you guys are good to me. <laughs> um, Susan? Yeah. Okay. So, wait. First of all, mm -hmm. can we talk about your name? Did your mom or dad ever call you Susie? They called me Sue. Sue. And my f friends growing up called me Subi. Subi. Yeah. I love that. I'd be like, Subi. Nowadays, do you have like friends that call you Subi that you that you realize like these are the people that I'm closest to. Yeah, I'm still the people in my life are the same people that have been in my life for my entire life. I mean, I grew up in LA and so all my closest friends are the same kids I grew up with. Um and they still call me Subi. My sister calls me Sue and my um some of my friends call me Suze. S O O Z E Suze. Hey, right, Suze. Suze. I've got a question for you. Yes. What advice would you give to a young